I am happy to tell the story and introduce my friend Alma to you. Some of you might remember 2017, uh, I was a part of uh, the Leadership Atlanta program, it's roughly 80 people a year get selected into that program and it's uh, uh, it, another chapter starting this, this August and I'm going to be involved again in that. But uh, but my year to go through, I graduated in, in 17. The program uh, raises up the issues of the city of Atlanta. Most of those issues tend to fall around black and white lines. And so the makeup of each class is roughly half black, half white, half male, half female, half for-profit, half non-profit. And so it's a rich conversation and learning opportunity. One component of that program is a study group. It's a group of eight or 10 who uh, meet together nine times once a month over the course of the program uh, to sit mostly in each other's homes and discuss these issues uh, in, a, in a pretty rigorous way. Uh, those groups are also represent that kind of diversity, and they're co-led by graduates of the program. And so I finished in 17, and I volunteered to co-lead a, co a group uh, in the 2019 class, and Alma was a part of that class, and that's where I got introduced. She was in my small study group, and I got introduced to the terrific work she was doing in our city uh, to fight domestic violence. A year or so later, I guess, Alma, we were at a, a home. It was a, it was a reunion kind of thing at one of the guys' house. It was a festive event. We we're eating shrimp and all. And I just checked in with Alma and said, how are you doing? And she teared up. That's not usually what happens at festive events and parties. She teared up and said, our location, the site that has been hosting our work, uh, is going away. Uh, I have to be out by such and such a date. And I said, Alma, we got nothing but space. Uh, for the work you do, we ought to be able to figure out some way uh, to, to, come to, to come to some terms uh, and make, make it possible for you to make a smooth transition for space. And so now for, how many years? Three years. Uh, she and her team have been uh, tenants of and part of this community here. And uh, they're on the fourth floor of the sanctuary building, built out a suite of offices there, and uh, do great work. So Alma, I'm excited to introduce you to t talk to this group about the great work you do. The Alma Domestic Violence Foundation's mission is to educate, empower, and celebrate survivors of domestic violence and help them achieve economic and self-sufficiency. Our goal is to provide survivors with the tools they need to break the cycle of domestic violence. Our signature events include Dinner for Divas, which is our annual fundraising gala that honors over 150 survivors of domestic violence. The National Survivors Conference is an annual event that seeks to empower survivors to achieve self-sufficiency, promote healthy living, and train them in the areas needed to become independent and financially capable of supporting themselves. Walk a Mile in Their Shoes is a 5K run or one mile walk where participants come together to advocate against domestic violence. Those who choose to walk are paired with a survivor who shares their personal story with them. The Alma Domestic Violence Foundation also offers classes to domestic violence survivors that reside in shelters. Too often, survivors of domestic abuse feel helpless, hopeless, and find themselves back in abusive relationships. In these classes, participants learn skills and strategies that empower them to emotionally break free from guilt and toxic relationships and begin a healthy relationship with themselves. Other services include social and mental health services, 
emergency food and housing, education and training, financial literacy, work skills training and job placement, and public policy advocacy. Your donations and support help change and save lives. My name is Alma Davis. I am the founder and CEO of Alma G. Davis. It used to be the Alma G. Davis Foundation, now the Alma Domestic Violence Foundation. Um, I am a domestic violence expert with over 20 years of service, 25 years of service um, in this space. Uh, I am a crisis interventionist. Um, on all the dramatic stuff that we do and the things that we see. I do have a fun side of life. I love fishing. I love uh, playing spades and I also love traveling. Most of all, I'm, I'm a pretty happy person. Um, I, I, I like to enjoy life. Uh, and at the end of the day, I do the work that I do because this has been a part of my life because I am a survivor as well. When I made this statement um, years ago, acts of domestic violence are ruining lives and families, I would have never imagined the impact that it has today. When we even think about, we talked about the incident this, uh, that took place earlier today with the, the shooting in Midtown. More often than not, and we'll see if I'm right, when you have a shooting where you have a male that has shot five women, it's more than likely that it has some type of tie into domestic violence in some kind of way. So it's going to be interesting to see how this thing plays out. And we'll remember tonight, and we'll see if I'm right. I don't take this, this, this lightly at, at all, this statement. Uh, women, men, and children are crying out for help. And what we do is we offer them encouragement, hope, and the tools they need to rebuild their lives. This mission that God gave me was so um, unexpected. I would have never have thought I would have ever been in this field. Although I grew up in a household of domestic violence, uh, which I saw every day, uh, I would have never thought I would have been doing this work. I am a survivor of child abuse. By the time I was 13, I was a survivor of sexual assault from an adult that I was uh, supposed to be in the care of. By the time I was 14 years old, I had my first set of black eyes from another 14-year-old who was exposed to domestic violence every day in his household. Then by the time I was 15, I got to experience rape. You could have never told me I would be in this situation because I never wanted to do this. But I understand that God allows you to go through things. And sometimes that's the trajectory of your life. But he allows you to go through things because you have something that you can share and you can help people through that type of lens. Now, I got my undergrad degree in computer science. I have a bachelor's in computer science. I have a master's in business. But I've never done a day in it. <laughs> I was always pulled back to domestic violence. And you have to forgive me. I keep hitting the little button. <laughs> but this is the reason that we do the work that we do in our office. So everybody sit back, and I'm going to take you through a journey of welcome to Alma Domestic Violence Foundation. We've been here for 18 years. We've been in Atlanta for 18 years now. Um, and our mission is to educate empower and celebrate survivors of domestic violence and help them achieve economic and self-sufficiency. Our long-term goal is to aid in the, the eradication of domestic violence globally, and we actually got to start our global opportunities last year. Last year, we were um, reached out to from a client in South Korea that found us, um, had heard about our work, found us on the internet through Instagram, reached out, and we worked three weeks with the South Korean embassy to bring her back here to Georgia, get her stable. She now has her own job, bought her first car, and the rest is history. So we are effectively being a part of the global commu community. Our services include uh, social and mental health. Everybody has been talking about the mental health. We, we are one of the very few organizations that through us, you can get one year of licensed therapy for free. 
Um, we work in, inside of uh, groups. We work inside of, we have our own team of therapists. Um, we do services such as legal, safety planning. Um, we do a lot of emergency food and housing. We actually uh, dove into the whole emergency housing situation during COVID. And during COVID, we spent over $40,000 in less than two months helping domestic violence clients get some type of safety um, housing-wise. $40,000 in less than two months. If you think about the amount of people that were calling saying, hey, I need to escape, but I can't go. $40,000. Uh, we do a lot of education and training. Um, I bet you all didn't know that over $8 billion a year is lost in corporations due to direct incidents of domestic violence. $8 billion. $5 billion is the cost that it costs the company for incidents, what we pay out through the health insurance, those of that nature. And the other $3 billion is due to lost productivity. Because if you're not at my job, I lose money. So we work with corporations, we work with schools, we work with um, colleges to sort of teach and train about the effects of domestic violence. Um, how do you know if domestic violence is taking place um, or in your company? Um, and things of that nature. So statistical wise, domestic violence, they say that it's one out of four women, one out of seven males. But only 5% of cases are reported. So when you bring in the other 95% that we don't talk about or we don't hear, the true numbers are more one out of every two women and one out of every four men will experience some type of domestic abuse in their lifetime. So why do we do what we do? So during COVID, we all heard the stories, right? Everybody's locked in the house. We were locked in the house for almost two years. And I made a prediction, and I was so right. I said, one, we're going to see a lot of pregnancies. Two, we'll see a lot of divorce, because we found out a lot of times people found out, you know what? I don't like you as much as I thought I did. You're normally going to work. I see you at night, <laughs> right? And the last prediction was, we would see a tremendous increase of domestic violence. When you think about all the stressors, you had people with your kids were home all day long. We had parents becoming teachers that didn't have a, didn't have a clue of, of what to deal with. You know, um, you had the, the financial stressors, people were losing money. People were losing their lives, all of these pressures. And I was so right. We alone saw an 82% increase in the clients that we served during, during uh, COVID. We saw so many clients that we end up having to rebrand our whole organization and changing our name from the Alma G. Davis Foundation to the Alma Domestic Violence Foundation. The reason being, our youngest client during COVID was seven years old. So we rebranded all of our programs. Our normal entry age was 13, but now all of our programs start as, at eight years old. So imagine having to sit in classes and sit in group therapy with all of these little kids from different families and backgrounds and they've been affected by domestic violence. It, it was it's something to imagine, it's something to see. One of the things we always wanna make sure is that we look at um, domestic violence holistically. Why do people stay? The number one reason that people stay in domestic violence uh, situations is due to finances, the lack of money or the control of money. And so we see that so many people because uh, whatever that need may be, it may be they have children, they're afraid to leave. We deal with uh, people who, are, who stay in domestic violence situations because they have animals that don't, they don't want to don't leave there. Um, but we take all of those little pieces and we cr we've created programs to address all of them. And so our holistic approach, we call it from rescue to renewal. And there's nothing you can bring to our table that we don't have a solution for. Can't speak English? It's okay. We'll, we'll find, we have fine translators for you. Don't have an ID? It's okay. We'll help you get it. Um, this is the critical work that we do, making sure that people have safe housing, food, the basic needs, and then making sure that mentally they are stable. And then we look at long term their housing. 
One of the great things we like to address um, is the financial, our financial literacy classes. And we, we partner, we, we find innovative ways to partner. We partner um, with banks. Uh, this is a picture of us inside of one of the shelters that we work with, with Truist Bank. Uh, that was supposed to be a six weeks course on financial literacy, the basics, writing a check, budgeting, what, how do you do a savings? That six weeks course turned into nine weeks and we had to say, hey, we can't keep coming back right now. But the ladies in the class were so excited because we went over things, simple things that you and I might know that they, they don't know, that they don't experience, that they didn't have experience in. So like credit repair, your credit card. We actually pulled everybody's credit and each person set one-on-one -on -one, one of our team members and with bank members, uh-oh, I'm still hitting stuff, sorry. Um, and we went through every item on their credit and got on the phones with the creditors because a lot of times abusers have messed up that, that, that survivor's credit. Again, it's all about finances, it's the control of. And so we love doing simple things like this, making you understand so that you can have long-term stability and not have to, have to rely on someone that's volatile. Last year, our program impact, we saw a total of 360 clients. We had over 282 hotline calls and we did a total delivery service of over 2,000 services. That's a lot. And that means the need is great. The work that we do is so needed. One of the fun parts of my job that I get to do is the whole public policy plea. Uh, advocacy. I tell people, listen, I could care less whether you're Democrat, Democrat, Republic, Independent. Uh, domestic violence has, it doesn't care. <laughs> and it affects, it affects all, all avenues. Um, and so why it's so important that we do this work um, in the public policy space is helping individuals and helping the people in charge understand why what we do is so needed. I have had the honor to, uh, the honor and privilege to be um, Nominated as a change maker through the United States uh, Women's Summit in D Washington, D.C., uh, as well as um, I actually got an opportunity to go to the White House and talk about domestic violence and what they wanted to hear my, my ideas on how do we solve this issue. Um, I've had the opportunity working here in Atlanta with the city council, uh, working with uh, First Lady uh, Marty Kemp all the way to going to the Hill right before COVID hit and meeting with several senators and representatives that were across party lines. So it is, it, I, this, this, is the fun, this is the fun part of what, of what I do. And so this, this slide just shows a little bit about the advocacy piece that is so important. Another big highlight of our organization is our community partners. We love partners. <laughs> we can't do the work that we do without people like you. Some of our past outreach events, um, we have worked with churches uh, during uh, October. October is National Domestic Violence Month, so it's always an opportunity to talk about that subject. We work with colleges and universities, uh, Spelman College, Kennesaw State, Morehouse, um, Georgia State. We even work with companies, uh, Amazon, when Amazon opened their big um, new, new facility in 2021, we were their host uh, community event that they brought out. And as you can see, we find creative ways to partner with organizations such as the, Buck the Buckhead YMCA and service the community. And these are just some of the, the pictures here. Um, we, uh, so like for instance, Spelman, they had um, their students did a whole entire uh, feminine hygiene drive and we knew nothing about it and we got a phone call and they said, hey, we want to bring some things with it. Those some things were 10 gigantic bags of brand new um, feminine hygiene items that students purchased on their own and had them mailed in. So that meant a lot to us to know that even students on that level are thinking about how they can help. Two of our, um, some of our signature events, um, you saw a little bit on the, vi on the video, we do a, a gala called Dinner for Divas every year. Um, the last one that was in person was right before COVID hit at the Georgia Aquarium. And this event is so unique. It's where we honor 
over 200, it used to be 150, now it's over 200 survivors of domestic violence that all live in shelters all across the state of Georgia. They come in for a day, they have no clue of what they're getting ready for. So you have over, we have over 200 hairstylists, makeup artists. Um, they get the nails done. They have formal gowns. If you ever come up to our office, we got a whole back room of nothing but formal gowns that we, we get donated or, or people collect and the shoes and the dresses and they don't have a clue of what they're getting ready for. And when they walk the red carpet that night, that's when they find out that everybody in that room is there to honor them. And our whole thing is, if I can show you how beautiful you are on the inside, then I can show you how beautiful you are on the outside. I'll walk a mile in their shoes. That's a fun favorite. That is our 5K run, one mile walk. And for those of you all that do not run, like me, I enjoy the one mile walking part so I can quickly lead the start line and quickly come back. <laughs> But that event is held every October as our kickoff for the National Domestic Violence Month. We actually um, do our, our course is on the Beltline. And I saw that you all are in, engaged in the Peachtree Road Race. Well, we have now been, we are an official certified um, run a race that people can run in our 5K and get certified for the, for the Pe Peachtree Road Race. So we're really excited about that. Um, but we do utilize the Beltline. People come out, as the video said, is so unique because if you are a survivor, you get the opportunity to walk and share your story. It was tremendous the first year we did this um, because we had the camera, the cameraman out, the news crews. After it was over, there was a gentleman that left a message on my office phone. He was actually a cameraman for one of the news stations. And he said this was the first time in his life he had never told anybody that he was a survivor of domestic violence because it affects men too. But when he saw people walking, people sharing, it gave him the courage for the first time in his life to share his story. And so that let me know what we're doing is working. Last but not least, we love keeping people engaged. And we have a very unique um, campaign called our Allies and Advocates campaign. And we just want to tell you a little bit more, show you about what we've done and how you can be engaged with us. Domestic violence has reported that one in four women and one in nine men experience severe intimate partner physical violence, contact sexual violence, and or stalking. About 1 in 12 teens have experienced physical dating violence. If these statistics surprise you, over the past two years since the outbreak of COVID-19, individual states have reported that domestic violence cases have increased, ranging from 21% to 35%. And the Alma Domestic Violence Foundation has worked tirelessly to assist those who have been affected by DV. During the pandemic, we have extended our services to individuals ages 8 and up. We provide a full range of services directly related to addressing domestic violence, including crisis intervention through our 24-7 hotline, individual counseling, temporary emergency housing and food assistance, DV shelter placement, advocacy services, safety planning, case management, legal advocacy, and trauma support groups. In addition, we also provide value-added services such as job readiness classes, financial literacy classes, as well as providing trauma-informed training to our community partners and stakeholders. We have also partnered with student-led national and collegiate organizations at our local colleges and universities, including Spelman College, Georgia State University, Kennesaw State University, and Clark Atlanta University. Domestic violence continue to increase, so has the need for critical resources to protect and assist victims and survivors. This is why we have launched the Allies and Advocates Giving Campaign. Allies and Advocates gives individuals, small businesses, and corporations an opportunity to build a safer, stronger, and more equitable community for those impacted by domestic violence. From providing a safety planning kit to covering three nights of temporary housing, your donations and contributions matter. To give, please visit our website at almadvf.org slash donate or text GIVE to 
4676. Leaving an abusive and violent environment may be the hardest part, but with your support, we can give survivors access to shelter and life-changing resources that'll take them from rescue to renewal. And so on that note, we invite you all to be a part of our Allies and Advocates uh, campaign. And that's a way for you to be engaged with us and let others know about domestic violence, things that are ruining the, the, the country, and to, to be engaged with us. You can follow us on, on Facebook. I don't know how many people are on social media, but we do have a Facebook under Alma DVF as well as Instagram. Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of the stuff. Um, it's under Alma underscore DVF. Um, and we invite you to volunteer. Come out to some of our special events. We have people coming through all the time, even our phone company, Nextiva. When they called, <laughs> they were like, hey, well, we keep handling and working with you all. What do you do? And when we talked about what we did, they came and worked with us to help sort dresses, as well as just two weeks ago, we had a center. Um, a center to come out and send their employees. So we have plenty of opportunities to volunteer. We have plenty of opportunities to ask for, for donations, whether that, uh, that's formal dresses, shoes, things of that nature. And more than, more than anything, we ask people to give. It's important to us because every service that we do is free. Everything that we do is free, and we cannot continue this important work without funding and without support. So on that note, I ask you to be a part of our team. Be a part of the Alma Domestic Violence Foundation. Uh, we look forward to it. We thank you all for the support, and we're going to be here for a long time to come. Thank you.